jump straight in with Forever Young because okay. your new track, your new single, it's come out with a nice kind of Jamaican set video as well. Very cool. Well, what was the kind of inspiration behind that? Um, well, <laughs> I was uh, dating this guy one time and then he said, you know, all he kept saying was, and he was Jamaican, and he, all he kept saying was, you know, you really got to go back to Jamaica, get in touch with your roots. And I was thinking, when is this guy going to stop saying this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the, the relationship fizzled out. And then I started to write my album and all of a sudden, shh all of this inspiration came through and this song came through and I thought, oh, I'll put this down. And then the lyrics just came flooding in and it, all of a sudden now I had a Jamaican patois rap for this song and it just came about from the heavens from, you know, I, I always believe there's a, a reason for everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the reason for that. I mean, are you, are you going to let him hear the track? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's probably heard it already. I think he keeps like, an eye on my socials. <laughs> <laughs> you can be like, I've finally done it. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So obviously, like Forever Young is it's very reggae, but kind of it's got this sort of feel good pop vibe as well. What yeah. is is that kind of shaping the vibe of the album? Um so uh, frequency? Is that the official yeah. title? Yeah. Frequency. I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Oh, thank you. Um, I think it's going to be a um a collection of all different types of songs because we came, first came out with R and B, then we came out with the pop, and then I'm the only one who used to write the rock track, so it's probably going to have a rock track on there. Uh, I'm going to revisit some of the old older five star tunes from the old albums. Nice. And yeah, yes, yeah, so it's going to be a mixture. Cool. And and what sort of stage is that at? Are you still recording, or is it kind of good to go? Yeah, still recording. And this is the first time that we're actually, well, that I'm actually uh, going to record a, a Christmas song. Oh, nice. So, yeah, it's called Santa Claus is Coming. So it's a brand new, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a brand new song. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Nice. Was it ever a five-star Christmas song? Was was it? Sorry. Was, to, oh, was, no, 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 never. No. That's crazy. When you think of all the it, albums and all the hits. Yes, yes, that's true. We never ever did a five star song, so I thought, you know what, this year it has to be done. Yeah, amazing. Um, so you're thinking kind of like mid twenty twenty four for the album. Yeah, um, spring summer. Nice. Yeah, come spring summer. It should be lovely. Amazing. Um, so we've already kind of touched on five star, and you know, looking back, you were such a young age when you you kind of found success with the band, which. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm 13. I've barely got my life together. So to think that, like, you know, 17, 18, like, it must have been quite an overwhelming experience. Um, I think because we grew up in a household full of music and my dad was, you know, in the 60s, he played guitar on the Wilson Pickett Midnight Iowa tour and worked with Desmond Decker and a lot of 60s stars. And he also wrote his own shows and uh, um, his own songs. Um. So um, he brought that experience into we, into our home and he, you know, music was everything in our household. So that's kind of like the vein that we, we all took in life. As soon as I was still in school, I had to give him notes to say, you know, please excuse me from school today because I have to go do top of the pops. And it just felt natural. Yeah. I, I mean, it, was there that kind of excitement with school friends or was it a bit like no she's lying this isn't true <laughs> <laughs> some of them probably thought thought i was lying <laughs> the first time but when they saw me on wogan doing the robot then yeah. like oh my god look at denise she's on tv doing the robot <laughs> uh, it's amazing um so you obviously mentioned you know growing up in a household with lots of music um, mm. I was watching some clips from, uh, I presume it was a BBC documentary, looking into Stone Court Mansion. Um, mm. Was that just insane? Was it as kind of fun and exciting as it looked growing oh, up gosh, there? Yeah. Well, just living in Sunningdale. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing because all of a sudden it's like we've grown out of the, the, the five bed in Essex. We're going over to the... A uh, one hundred bed in in Sunningdale, <laughs> with a tennis court and a steam room and and a gym. Um, 
with two grand pianos and it's like wow it was it was a huge change but I think we needed the space because we were growing up yeah. I was 19 at the time and did you record a lot of the five star albums there as well well, the five star album, um, which had a nice blue cover with the, the five of us across, was recorded actually across the courtyard in, okay. um, yeah, in the um, in our main studio that we had built. We were the first people to have, well, first, um, we were the first to have an SSL desk, uh, mixing desk flown into the country at the time. So dad was getting it prepared for when Madonna wanted to come in, when Michael wanted to come in, Whitney and all of these stars wanted to come in from uh, America to, to record, they would go there because the, you know it had that first SSL desk. Um, I think I'd read, I don't know if this is true, but there was, uh, someone had commented on the video and said, you know, you were one of the first families to let BBC cameras into your house other than the royal family when they'd done their documentary in the, uh, in the 50s. Um, so that's a pretty cool achievement. Yeah, it, it was. It really was. I think we're the first to do MTV uh, Cribs, actually. I think they grabbed the idea off of us. <laughs> yeah, you're surely due some royalties for that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned Michael there. Obviously, Five Star you know, sparked a lot of comparisons to like you know, the British Jacksons. How do you kind of how do you feel about that comparison? Oh, I'm absolutely blown away because look at the talent. I mean, Michael was the most celebrated um, artist in the whole universe. Even the aliens, I think, loved Michael Jackson. I mean, <laughs> that's as far as he went. He was just such a humongous talent. And the the whole family, um, I went on ahead to support the Jacksons on their Unity tour. And it, I think it's it's a phenomenal and it's it's honourable. Yeah, um, I actually I remember seeing you supporting the Jacksons in uh, in Glasgow, and it it must have been about 2012, 2013. I was trying to pinpoint the exact date. Um, but wow. yeah, so you know, five, five star and Jacksons, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> what what lineup? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We should have um we should have done we should do some more actually. I think yeah yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, would you ever kind of reach out and say, you know, you know, Jermaine, Tiso, did you fancy recording something? Uh huh. Yeah. We're on the same agent. We're with the same agent. Oh, so brilliant! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, but I mean, definitely look for sure that. Would be cool. Um, was that a kind of strange experience supporting the the Daxons? Did you know them relatively well, or you know, was it quite new to you going into that? What the, the Jacksons? Yeah. Did you did you kind of have a relationship before supporting them? Oh, no, no, no. We were with the same agent. And yeah. um, I think I was working with Sagala at the time. And he released a song called Easy Love, which is the Michael Jackson's, the mix of yeah. uh, Michael Jackson, the J5. So he came to the club to watch me when I was performing with Tito, because normally when Tito comes into town, I sing the J5 section because it's a very, very high nice. octave. Yeah, register. So um, then my agent said, uh, Sagala saw me in the audience and he wanted me to sing on his song uh, on the Top top of the Pops edition. So that's how we all kind of hooked up. But we are on the same agency, so it wasn't too hard. And that must have been one of the, the last Top of the Pops that was broadcast round about that time, wasn't it? I think it was a New Year's one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you feel about that now? Because obviously there's there's not really any platforms on television for artists to showcase new music. I know there's things like Jules Holland and um, but really there's not a huge sort of platform anymore like Top of the Box. Um, mm. what, what would you do now as an artist essentially to promote your, your music? What, what's the kind of the goal to? I guess it's the um, socials. Yeah. You're straight to the socials. I just did breakfast this morning. Now um, what everybody's just putting it up on on the socials. You know, if anybody didn't see it, then they go online so they can see it. So, um, I guess we've got to move ahead with the times, which is a shame because we still have, you know, how comes we still have TV if we've got so much social media? I know. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, I I guess uh, we've just got to move ahead with the times and, um, yeah, go move ahead. Yeah, it's, it's, I think a lot of it is, is so dictated by Spotify as well and streaming services now. Um, it's the, you know, I, I, I love buying up like a record or a CD still. It's, it's nice to have that physical product. It um, is sweet. 
I am thinking about um, putting Forever Young uh, EP on onto vinyl yes. um, to have that physical copy in your hand. Um, and I've made a point with the Five Star 40th Anniversary Remix Collection CD with the extended mixes and the radio mixes. I've only put it onto um, download platforms. Yeah, I think it's fairer for artists as well. Uh, because look at the revenue that you know artists <laughs> make from streaming. It's, it's shocking. It really is. It really is. It really is. Yeah, uh, but you know what? It's, it's, it's getting downbeat now. Let, let's bring it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> you mentioned the, the five star reissues. Is that Cherry, Cherry Red that are handling those? Or Cherry Pop? Um, no, no, no. Um, what to put it on vinyl, sweetie? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going to still be looking into that. I think I'll probably be doing it myself. Cool. Um, do you think there there is a, a chance? That I think it was 2001, the last five star album. Do you think there's a chance that you know that you might convince Lorraine and you know record as a, as a group again? There, there could be, there could be, because uh, Forever Young is uh, creating quite a buzz out there right now. So maybe there might be a meeting, and maybe you know, all of us might get together for the Christmas video. Who knows? Exciting. Watch this space. <laughs> um, I was also reading that you were part of the Eurovision Song Contest jury in uh, 2022. Um, oh, yes, yes. Eurovision. What, I mean, Eurovision has just become such a phenomenon, even more so uh, in the past few years since it's been to Liverpool. Um, what was that experience like? That was great. It was like security taken into one room, then go downstairs to another one, lock that door, and then go there, and then you can't leave unless you want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then security standing at the door, and then all of the other five, all, all the other four, we can't look at each other's papers, and we're all watching the same thing at the, on the screen, just marking this one, marking that one. And then we had to give all our papers in. Um, and then, you know, they unlocked the door and then just took all of the votes wherever they they, they took them. But I won't yeah. discuss too much more because the Eurovision is still going on. Yeah, you don't want the EBU after you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, was there ever any chat about, you know, yourself or Five Star going towards uh, the UK for Eurovision? Um, I'd love to sing a Eurovision song. Have you seen the movie Eurovision? Yes, yeah, the Netflix I one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It and is it is mad. I think it's as mad as that. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun, you know. The, the everybody voting for everybody. I think it's nice. It kind of congregates people together. Yeah. Um and it, it is it's that kind of melting pot of different cultures, different sort of genres. It is it's it's great. Yeah. Um oh, you know, another big sort of TV um, thing you were part of was The Voice um, in recent years. Um, and that was kind of, as of early seasons, was it the first season, second season of The Voice? First. First series. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah um, first season. And how did that experience feel? Because obviously, you, you know, you've got a real rich musical history, um, you know, in, in Five Star and then kind of re-emerging yourself as a solo artist. Was it mm. kind of terrifying doing it on such a big platform? Um... Well, um, I told my brothers and sisters I was going to do the program and they said, no, you're not. You're going to maybe do it as a judge, but don't do it as a contestant. <laughs> what are you doing? So I'm thinking, oh, whatever. It's been 30 years. I really need to launch us back out there to see if people really remember. And when I was going for the auditions, um, I didn't even know that the people knew who were auditioning me, who I was. Yeah. So um, it, it was it was a great little experience. Nice getting back onto the, the, the BBC. ITV. I don't, um, yeah, but I think it was, it was ITV at that point. ITV. I think it went, did it go ITV, BBC, then back to ITV? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, BBC, <laughs> ITV. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Team Tom, um, is it one of these things that for TV audiences it looks like there's a lot more involvement or are the are the coaches actually quite involved in your sort of journey on the show? They, they show, they record it like it is. Mm -hmm. Is it still on? I think it's still on ITV, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> think of a, a politically okay answer. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm out of the contract where you can only say certain things. <laughs> but um, I think the media has to make um, the programs look as great as they can to sell it to the public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get in trouble for that. <laughs> um, do you do you feel like the the industry has changed a lot since you know eighties um to to now? I I mean I know we have spoken about it with Spotify and streaming, but are there any other changes that you've noticed um from operating as a solo artist now to um to sort of the eighties? Well, you don't really have to get out the house as as much. When we were back back in the day, I always used to hear Daddy getting up early in the morning, taking the calls, packing his briefcase, going up to London, staying up all day and coming back, you know, exhausted um, just to speak to the record companies. But now you can do everything on, on Zoom. Now um, you've got your little independent distributors. And you've got your your platforms. You can you can send your track to be the bass there, the guitar there, the keyboard there. Everything congregates together. You go to your studio or have your home studio uh, to do your vocals, and then you've got a track to upload onto your platform and selling and everywhere. I think it's yeah. it's amazing in that way. Yeah, I mean, oh, you could have it. Uh, a... Huh? I was gonna say you could have a number one without leaving the house. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And somehow we've got COVID to thank for that in a, in a positive way. Yeah. Because some, so many people have started businesses online and there's, there's lots of men health, mental health that you can just do the Zoom and everybody's, you know, they're working from home. And in that aspect, it's a, it's a great thing. It's, it's a positive thing. Yeah. Um, I would love for you to, to scan back from the moment you started in the music industry to now and if there's any moments that you would live, uh, relive, if there's anything that you could choose to experience again that maybe you didn't appreciate at the time or you think that was insane, I would love to, to experience that again. Mm -hmm. I think the two sold out tours, I think. Yeah. And yeah. and being nominated for a Grammy because I should have gone to the Grammys. Mm -hmm. We should have flown out and been in that audience. Yeah. Um, and what year, what year was the Grammy nomination? Um, that's when we first started. That was the first B side, so it must have been 83, 84. Yeah, and it's, it's a real kind of I think the 80s is such a special time in the music industry. Um, that really the 70s were great when you think of disco and and sort of punk, but I think the 80s have just got a special you know, a special memory for so for so many of us. Um, yes, it does. yeah, um, so you well, relive the, the world periods. Yeah. Pardon, sweetie? So you would no. relive the world tours? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they were phenomenal. But you don't look old enough to be liking 80s music. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I've well, got a little young guy. Okay. He's probably 27. Well, he's, to, he's, he's I'll take that. Things. I'll take that. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, wonderful. I, I was a child of the 90s, but as soon as yeah. I was kind of old enough to be on the internet, I, I kind of went further back to the 80s. Um, oh, wonderful. But, um so a recent cover the slightest touch by steps um which again was a great kind of move to bring more attention to the five star original also um were you a fan of the cover um h i think h did we contacted each other on whatsapp and we were talking and i just uh you know i said it's a wonderful mix that you you guys remake that you guys have done well done and i think they were on tour so there was talk about the collaboration at the time but i think they got too busy or and we got busy so it didn't actually work yeah uh but it's it's a nice cover i know michael uh michael j was happy songwriter yeah um oh, yeah would there be any other artists that you would love to cover one of your solo tracks or a five-star track who would the artist be and what would the track be <clears throat> I, I really love Chris Brown I love his stuff but I couldn't sing on a Chris Brown record because I just need to hear um I think Lionel Richie Yo. any song even from the Commodores um yeah any song that Lionel Richie sings and it, he can do any genre as well you know he did a country album a few years ago and it was just flawless he's just got such a rich voice my God, I need to go and purchase that. I need to purchase it in a physical copy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, I would really like to wrap up with just a quick fire, some uh, nothing too tricky, but just some kind of general questions about you, um, about your favourite things. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into your psyche. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, okay. So, favorite movie? Ah, oh, Legends of the Fall. Nice. Um, yeah. the last song you listened to? Uh, my Christmas song and Forever Young. Oh, nice. We plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, your all-time favorite singer. Nat King Cole. Um, would you choose a banger or a ballad? A banger. Banger. Um, your biggest fear? <laughs> Deep water. Okay. Um, your favorite animal? Cat or tigers. Yeah. Lovely. Um, if you could visit another time period, that's a strange one. Hmm. Uh, Egypt, Egypt, the Egyptian time, I think, way back there. Yeah. Um, your worst habit. <laughs> uh, what's my worst habit? I think I'm spoiled. I come out too quickly from relationships. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, hopefully, hopefully Jamaican man's not watching that. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's proof. <laughs> Um, they're going to make a film of your life. Who will play you? Oh, my gosh. Tony Braxton, I think. Oh, lovely. And she's got the voice as well. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Um, <laughs> well, Denise, it's been such a pleasure to chat to you and, um, you know, talk about single. I'm very excited for the album. And hopefully some live dates, maybe a little tour. Is that on the work in the works? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. For the Fantastic. next year, for sure. Mm-hmm. Lovely. And it's well, been lovely speaking to you too, sweetheart. And, and I love that last, last, last the end of your interview. That's amazing. Nobody's ever asked me those questions before. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your weekend. Wonderful. You too, sweetheart. God okay, bless. Okay, speak to you later. Bye-bye.